The next couple of projects will help your artist go from the land of two-dimensional to three-dimensional very easily. The first project we're going to make is a fish. The kids will start off with their one ball of clay, but we'll need to take a pinch off. And the way you do that is you hold the clay with one hand and you twist it with the other to twist the end off. You need to be a, have a piece about the size of a lemon. Put that in the corner, make the rest of the clay into a nice, round, smooth ball. Then we get to do our fun one, two, three. So clay in the middle of the mat, and here we go. One, two, three. Again, thick as an Oreo cookie. Then you'll give every student a piece of telephone book paper. I use telephone book paper because it's readily available, and also all the sheets are the very same size. This piece of paper is going to have to burn out in your kiln, and telephone book paper burns out very easily without a lot of smoke. Newspaper will make a lot of smoke in your kiln. So wad it up into a nice wad, put it in the middle of your clay, and fold your clay up like a hard shell taco. I'm sure to tell my students that this isn't a soft shell or a burrito where you wrap it around, but those hard shell yellow ones. Have you noticed that I use the language of food? You know, food is our common language. And so instead of saying a quarter of an inch thick, I say thick as an Oreo cookie, peanut size M&M a lemon, a hard shell taco, because it is our common language and all children will understand. So here we go, we've built it up like a hard shell taco, and then you're going to make a baby duck with your fingers, and we're going to pinch from one end almost to the other. We're pinching these edges up, pinching these edges up, but not all the way, because this is going to be our fish's mouth. This is the fish's top fin, and if we take one more tear out right here, that makes our fish's tail. Set the fish down, and then it's time to add some fish parts. That's why we have our lemon. Take a pinch off the clay. We're going to roll two balls. I let the students know they can make big eyes, little eyes, winking eyes, one eye bigger than the other eye, sleepy eyes. And we're going to make two balls of clay. We're going to set them right here by the mouth. But, you know, clay doesn't stick by itself. So here we go. We need to use our clay glue. Set that here. A little bit of more clay glue. Set this here. They can leave the eyes just plain, or if they want to, they can take their finger and poke into the eyes to where they're looking at you. Now we need to make the fish's fins. Round ball of clay, all the rest of their lemon. Make it flat, and then we're going to tear this into half. That makes two fins that match. And you can set the fins on the side of the fish. We can do it horizontally, vertically, diagonally, in the back, in the front. Just be sure your students put them on with clay glue. This is a really fun project because we can talk a lot about animation. The nicest thing about clay is how fluid it is and how it moves. This fish looks like he's just kind of sitting still, but I can use my finger and pinch around the fins. That makes it look like it's floating in the water. I can flip the tail around and make it look like it's jumping out of the water, and I can even give my fish a smile if I want to. This is a really nice way of entering into sculpting with your children. We have another project that's similar to the fish, a stegosaurus project. Again, flat piece of clay, wadded up paper, fold the clay up like a hard shell taco. This time when we quack around the edges, we're going to quack from one end all the way to the other. And then we're going to introduce sculpting. We can sculpt the head of the stegosaurus by wadding up the clay. I always call sculpting using your hands like tools. And I always try to let my students know that when I'm not letting them use a tool, I want them to use their hands as tools. This is going to make our stegosaurus's plates on the back. This is our stegosaurus's head. When I see that they've got a good head, I give them a tool. We want to use the tool to make the eyes. I'm careful to let them know that their eyes are not in the front like mammals, but on the side like reptiles. Using the flat end of the tool we go in, then we're going to make a mouth. But we're not going to just draw the mouth, we're going to cut the mouth in with our tool so we can really open it up. The stegosaurus doesn't need sharp teeth because stegosauruses were plant eaters. So you can use the flat end of the tool and just go around the edge of the mouth to make his big flat teeth. Also we need to make the stegosaurus's tail so we can pull this out, put a little spike on the end. Be sure that that spike is thick as an Oreo cookie so you don't have to do a lot of gluing. And now it's time to make the feet for the stegosaurus. We're going to take a pinch of clay, roll it into a hot dog, and very similar to the animal bowl, we cut this in half, cut this in half, cut this in half. We make two front feet and two back feet. Instead of clay gluing each individual foot, we can get the clay glue and just put it all over the stegosaurus's belly, and then we're going to pop him on his feet like this, and that way he'll stay. 
At the teacher check, you'll need to take your finger and poke in to the stegosaurus to give a vent hole for the paper. I call this making a belly button, but I'm sure to talk to my students about how real stegosauruses did not have a belly button because they were born from eggs. At the teacher check, you'll want to give them a plate, just a cheap paper plate, for them to carry their stegosaurus over to the painting station. Same thing with the fish, the cheap paper plate at the clay lady check. Now I will tell you, on the stegosaurus, it's a fun exercise at the painting station. I ask the students, what color were real stegosauruses? You get a lot of greens and browns, but you know what? Nobody knows. Because the only way we know stegosauruses even existed were from the bones. But we can be scientists because if a stegosaurus was a plant eater and they were running from the meat eaters and they needed to hide, where would they hide? Of course, they would hide in their environment. And what's their environment? But leafy, brown foliage. And so that's why scientists think the stegosauruses are probably green and brown. But know that your students can paint their stegosaurus any color and they might be right. This next project is very fun. It does have a lot of breakable parts and I'll try to tell you everything you need to know so that you don't have to deal with breakage. But we're going to make a bug project. All your students get one ball of clay, again about 18 out of a bag of clay, and then you put your hands on either side and you twist it into two. Make the balls of clay nice and round. And then we're ready for that one, two, three. Now on this project, Clay Lady breaks the rules just a little bit because we need to have our pancakes of clay thick as a double stuff. I only break the rules once and that's for this project. So you can let the kids know this is a special project because it's thick as a double stuff. So here we go. Our balls of clay are nice and round, kind of separate because they're getting ready to flatten out. One, two, three. Nice and thick. After they make the two balls flat, it's time to cut out two clay handprints. If their hand is larger than the pancake of clay, not a problem. You just scoot the hands down to where the fingers and half the palm are on the pancake of clay. We don't really need a lot of this. So when they've scooted their hands down, you give them a tool, hold the tool straight up and down, cut all the way through the clay to the mat around their fingers. It doesn't matter if they use the same hand twice or if you do one of each hand or if you get a neighbor to help you cut out your handprint. I always make sure that I have plenty of helpers in this workshop to help the younger beginner artists cut out their hands. So you pull the scraps away from the handprints. If the scraps don't come away easily, just have your artist take their tool and follow the previous lines again, cutting all the way through the clay to the mat. Wad your scraps up in a ball, set them up in the corner. Now we're going to rearrange our clay handprints to where the thumbs are pointing north and the fingers are pointing east and west. Now this hand, I did the same hand twice, so I'll have to flip it over to make sure that both thumbs are north and the fingers are east and west. Take your scrap clay, you don't need all of it. I found that about half usually works. Make a round ball of clay and we're going to make it nice and flat, thick as an Oreo cookie and lay this on the back of the bug for the shell. Here comes the fun part. Instead of the teacher check, we get to have the teacher stomp. What do you do with a bug if you can't shoo him out the room with an open door, an open window? You step on him. So your students will bring their mat up to you with the bug on it. You'll take the scraps away and then you will let them rest their hand on your shoulder while you are squatted down on the floor and the students step into the bug and you want it to kind of squish just a little bit. They pull the shoe away and look, the texture of their shoe makes the back of the bug. Be prepared when you teach this to your students. At this point, everybody will be looking at the bottom of their shoe. I always make sure that I wear a really good shoe when I'm teaching bugs for the children that have just kind of a flat sole on the bottom of their shoe. And that way you can take your shoe off and they can just step right on the top of your shoe to make a good texture on the back of the bug. We're not finished yet because he's a little flat, kind of looks like he got run over by a truck. What we do now is we flip it over. You'll write the name of the student and maybe the year that they made it. And then we're going to put it on an upside down bowl. We're going to flip it over like this, lay the fingers on the bowl like this, and the thumbs become the antennas. A very fun bug. This will dry this way, you'll load it into the kiln this way, and then it will come back to you fired to where it stands up. A couple things, because this is a spider, and if you want to make a bug, an insect, they have six legs, not eight. So if we count six, then we have these two extras. Pull these back, and then you make the third body part of the bug, head, abdomen, and thorax. And you can pull this up like a pincher, and even on the thumbs, they can be straight up like antennas, or they can flip around like pinchers, or this is my favorite. They can roll, you can poke your fingers in, and then they become bug eyes. And if you're wondering why we don't use clay glue on the bug, that stomp does the job. 
So when it's time to glaze this project, it's very important that you bent the clay lady rule just a little bit and made it double stuff because the legs will be very fragile and breakable. If they do break, I'm going to talk to you about that in a little bit in this DVD about repair. So there's our bug. Thank you.